Hey, welcome back to From Scratch Ranch. Jason here, and today we are gonna finally get our Woodmiser LX25 sawmill out of the barn and installed on these brand new concrete piers that we've just finished putting in. So stay tuned. So if you've been following our channel for a while, you may have seen a few videos where we've been using our Woodmiser LX25 sawmill inside our barn for projects like our cutting the wood for our vent hood, um, some charcuterie boards and wine flights, some coat, coat racks and hat hooks, things like that, small projects, but they still created a lot of dust inside the barn. And, you know, we never had any intention of leaving the sawmill and using it inside the barn. It's always been meant to be out here. We finally just got around to getting this project done. And the first part, getting all of these concrete piers in place, is done finally if you haven't seen that video there's a link down in the description below uh, and check that out we will eventually build a shed over the sawmill here uh, to protect it from all the elements um, but i kind of wanted to sawmill the lumber to build the shed so i can't do that until i get the sawmill out here and so it's kind of a chicken the egg kind of a thing so anyway um, we will eventually build that shed. It just is probably gonna be a while. All right, let's talk a little bit about the design of this foundation for the sawmill. Um, I really didn't find a whole lot out there on YouTube to, to you know, research to find the, the best. Um, I, there was some hit and miss ones of some really good, you know, wood posts and, and framework or just right on the ground. Um, I, so I was trying something different. I went with concrete piers. Um, these are eight inch forms. And each one of these piers goes at least 30 inches into the ground, um, some of them a little bit more. And then on the front here, it's about 10 inches above ground. In the back, it's uh, about, you know, around 18, 12 to 18 inches. This is kind of a slope here. So um, I have this thing elevated up. I wanted the sawmill elevated a bit. I've got it on the ground in the barn. And uh, yeah, I think I want it elevated up just to be better on my back. So. In the concrete here, I've got these brackets. These brackets are for four by six treated beams that the sawmill is currently sitting on right now. Um, and that will be moved out here and then up be anchored in with these lag bolts in the side. There's four holes, two on each side. Um, we'll throw some lag bolts in there to help secure it. So these piers are all six feet apart. And the reason I did that is my sawmill bunk is 20 feet long. And you can't really just go up to Home Depot or Lowe's and buy a 20 foot treated four by six beam. Uh, so I needed to divide it up some way. And so what I did is I, I divided it into a 12 footer and an eight footer to give me my 20 foot. That's why these are six feet apart for the 12 footer in the front, the eight footer in the back. And the, it's gonna overhang by two feet off the end, but I, I'm not concerned about that because I'm not gonna be cutting, you know, it'll be rare for me to cut a 20 foot log on here. Most likely they're gonna be eight to 12 foot right up here in the front. Um, and that's where all the, the weight will be. So that's what I'm most concerned with. All right, that's enough yapping about it. So let's head back to the barn and go pick up the sawmill. Okay, well, as you can see, the sawmill is fully assembled. <laughs> a 20 foot bunk here. And the plan is to separate this into three separate parts. The bunk into two separate 10 foot sections and then the head unit. And then I will use the tractor to lift those three parts out and carry them out to the new location. Okay, before I can actually lift this thing off, there is a track down here that this is hooked on. So I've got to unbolt at least this back section of it. It's just a couple bolts and pull this track off so that it will release that side of it before I lift it up.
the sun going down No stars in the sky I'ma head down the road Across the county line Where the roll of the smoke They pour beer and wine Hearts break on the juice box Where the neon stars Where the neon stars shine Space I'm getting back. I'm just doing my time where the neon stars shine. All right, well, it's getting a little uh, dark out here. Too dark to be, you know, finishing this job up for sure. Uh, but look at this sunset. Beautiful sunset out there. Look at that shadow in the sky. Pretty cool. Yeah, the days are starting to get shorter, um, unfortunately. I, and I only have so much time after work to get little projects like this done. So we'll have to wrap this up tomorrow. So we'll see you in like one second. And just like that, it's the next day. So let's get back to work here. Last night, I got the three pieces of the sawmill brought out and also these four by six beams, the uh, 12 foot and the eight foot to make the 20 foot length I've got, two of them. And then I also do have this uh, two by six by 12 that I'm gonna cut into four pieces and brace that in as my lateral support. All right, let's get these beams in place. Now I went only an inch and a half long on the lag bolt because this is three and a half inches wide. So inch and a half, inch and a half. Um, I couldn't go any longer than that otherwise because I got to put bolts on the other side too. So they'll hit each other. That was the last one. So everything is secured to the beams here. Everything's solid. So now I need to work on my laterals. I'm gonna cut four pieces 
to set in between um, to tie it together. All right, well, it's getting dark on me again, so we're gonna have to finish this up tomorrow, but man, check out that sunset there. That's awesome, another good sunset. All right, I'm back, and hopefully I've got enough daylight now to finish this project. So last night, we finished up installing these beams and securing them to the concrete piers. Today, now, we're going to lift the bunk sections here onto the new framework that I've got, and to do that, I need to use the tractor to lift them up, um, and I'm gonna need some help doing that. So Michaela, my daughter, is gonna come out here. She's gonna operate the tractor while I help position the actual bunks onto the new foundation there. <laughs> Okay, this side needs to push on the right side. It needs to come together. There we go. Okay, we need to put these on, these clamps. So, they go on the inside, like so. Okay, so put it in there and then um, like that. Okay, and then we gotta tighten that down. So here, Going? Yep. Okay, I don't think it's spinning anymore. Okay. See, that pulls it together nice and tight. Yeah. All right. Just a double check. <laughs> Never hurts to double check. Yep, good. Good. I mean, I use the laser level, right? We use a laser level, so everything should be good. It's good. This thing is super level. All right. Okay, next. Um, we gotta make sure it's all like lined up perfect on here, right? And then we're going to uh, lag bolt it down. There's holes in the rail. You see the holes? Yeah. We're gonna drill a little pilot hole and then put a lag bolt in. Okay. But this side, I need to take the rest of this, um, 
this uh, guard off. There's a guardrail on here that keeps the, the head unit on, but I can't get to the holes underneath um, without taking that off. So I'm gonna take that off. I took it off over here on the where the head unit was so I can get the head unit off, but I gotta take the rest of it off and put that back on. We're gonna, we're just gonna drill a tiny little pilot hole. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't go that deep. We're just gonna barely just put a, like that, just a little bit. And then we're gonna use these galvanized bolts and the galvanized bolts in the washer. Just like that, okay. all the way down. Got a lot of them to do. Okay, you ready? Go ahead, go up. Looking good? Okay, that's good. Okay. You're on a hill, so it's kind of weird. All right, go ahead and lower it. I can't believe she set that on there perfect. Good job. All right, I think that's it. I just gotta put that one um, catch rail on the back side, but it's, it's on there, it's nice. This is gonna be so awesome. All right, so now I, last thing I need to do is put this catch rail back on uh, so that the head unit gets secured onto the sawmill. Okay, I got three of them on. Now I'm on my last section. So in order to get that one, I just need to slide the head unit over and onto the catch rail that's there. Down. Oh man, this thing slides way better than it did even on the barn floor. I'm assuming because the concrete on the barn floor wasn't perfectly flat. Chicken, what are you doing over here? You lost? You're a long way from home. All right, last one. All right, now that you saw how we built this thing, let's cover some of the costs, because I know you're really interested in how much this thing cost to build. It was a little pricier than I expected. It came out to a total of around $600. Tax not included in that number, but around $600 in total. Okay, let's start with the most expensive thing. It was the concrete forms. Yeah, I needed eight of those things. They're eight inch in diameter, they're four feet tall. Eight of them at $17.88 a piece was $143.04. Yeah, a little pricey. The second highest cost was the concrete anchor brackets, the four by four anchor brackets that I put into the, the top of the concrete there on those forms. Those were $16.58 a piece, and I need eight of those. So that was $132.64. Yeah, it starts to add up pretty quickly. Um, the next thing starting to get into the lumber was the uh, four by six by 12 footers. That's the treated four by six lumber I had. I had 12 footers, I had two of those. 
They were $31.78 a piece at the time I bought these things. Um, and at $63.56, lumber has been kind of going up and down. It was really high before. This was probably not the lowest it's been, but it, cheaper than it's been in the past, in the recent past. Um, then I had uh, two, let's see, two four by six by eight footers, and those and those were treated, and those um, were twenty dollars and forty eight cents a piece. So for two of those, it cost forty ninety six. So yeah, the stuff's starting to really really add up here. Um, then I had the rebar. I bought four ten foot pieces of rebar. Um, that was cheaper than buying like two foot or three foot already cut pieces. Um, it was almost the same cost to buy a ten footer versus a two footer which is interesting, I guess you're paying for them to cut it. So the 10 foot piece of rebar, 3 8 inch rebar, was a 4.98 a piece, four of them, that was 1992. Um, actually, another big cost I skipped by was the uh, concrete. I missed the concrete. So that, I needed 16 80 pound bags of quickcrete. And those were 5.97 a piece, and that came out to $95.52. So that was another big cost. Um, another one was the uh, lag bolts. So I needed 32 one and a half inch by three eighths inch lag bolts, those galvanized lag bolts, and these were 98 cents a piece. And that's at the discount purchase buying it by the box. And um, so I, at 32 uh, units at 98 cents a piece, that's $31 and 36 cents. Next, um, I did another piece of lumber, the two by six by 12 footer that I cut down to those uh, four pieces for the cross braces, um, that was $12.68. So that's, I just need one of those. Um, let's see, what else did I have here? I had, oh, the fence stays. I bought eight of those fence stays. They were only $1.25 a piece. Um, so that was only uh, $10. And, oh, washers. I needed 32 washers. Those were 16 cents a piece, buying in bulk. And that was, uh, that added up to $5.12. So rounding, it, you know, turned out to be, about six hundred dollars a little bit more than i anticipated probably worth it how much would it cost if i just put wood posts and frame post down on the ground and framed it up i don't know a lot less um but is it worth it i think it might be worth it i think i like the how solid these concrete piers are um and how well this will probably work out will be a test of time we'll see i haven't thrown a log on here and saw it saw on anything yet so uh, check out that video when that comes out when we start sawing some logs on this thing. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something from it, um, especially the cost and how we did it. So if you liked it, hit that like button, subscribe if you're not subscribed already, and make sure to hit that alert bell if you want to be alerted to the future videos we may be putting out and sawing some logs on this thing. So until next time, keep living the dream.